Hi, this is Sam Gansfried. I'll be presenting Fictitious Play Outperforms Counterfactual Regret Minimization. So, in two-player zero-sum games, Nash equilibrium is an extremely compelling solution concept. It has a property where, by the minimax theorem, a Nash equilibrium strategy would be unbeatable in expectation, regardless of the strategy used by the opponent. Nash equilibria are exchangeable um, in that um, if one player computes one Nash equilibrium, the other player follows a different one. Together, the strategy profile is a Nash equilibrium. And furthermore, Nash equilibrium can be computed in polynomial time, for example, by a linear program, and so can be found efficiently. Now, for more than two players and for two-player non-zero-sum games, none of these properties hold. There could be multiple equilibria with different values for the players, one player can deviate from an equilibrium and in addition to hurting himself can also hurt other players. If the players follow different equilibria, then the joint strategy profile may not be in equilibrium. And furthermore, computing a Nash equilibrium is pad hard and widely conjectured that no efficient algorithms exist. And so um, this theoretical justification that exists for the two player zero sum games um, does not exist in multiplayer games. And so there's, there's no theory that clearly justifies using Nash equilibrium in multiplayer games as a solution concept. Um, now, a few years ago, um, I taught an undergrad AI class and um, for the class project, I had um, the students break into teams and create an agent for a three player game, three player coon poker um, and they create, they submitted 11 different agents using a wide variety of different approaches. Um, the, the website, and I have a blog post with more information about um, that project. And so this game, as it turns out, it's small enough that one can compute an exact, an analytical exact Nash equilibrium solution. Um, as it turns out, there's a whole um, continuum of equilibria in this game, and they were computed analytically. Here's um, by um, Saffron Gibson, and Sturdivant. Um, and so after the class project ended, I ran experiments um, where we computed two of the Nash equilibrium strategies that were computed in this paper. The two, essentially there was a continuum of the most robust equilibrium and we used the two boundary equilibrium um, from that set. And we ran these against um, 10 of the um, agent submitted in the class project. The 11th was too slow, so we excluded it. Um, and essentially, um, we saw that, um, that these two, both of these equilibria significantly outperformed all of the submitted agents. And so even though there's no guarantee in, in theory that at Nash equilibrium would do well, this shows in practice Nash equilibrium can perform extremely well in games with more than two players. Now, if you followed um, the computer poker research in the last several years, you may have heard of this algorithm, counterfactual regret minimization, um, which um, has been used to create um, superhuman agents, will actually essentially exact Nash equilibrium for limit, two-player limit Texas Hold'em, and superhuman agents for two-player no limit Texas Hold'em, and, um, and it's essentially an iterative self-play procedure. It's been proven to converge to Nash equilibrium in two-player zero-sum games. Now, for multiplayer games, it can still be run, um, but it has no significant theoretical guarantees. Um, it was shown um, by one paper, empirically showed that it did compute an epsilon equilibrium for very small epsilon, um, essentially computed a very close degree of Nash equilibrium approximation in a game called three-player coon poker, but in a larger game called three-player Leduc Hold'em, it did not, it computed epsilon equilibrium where epsilon was extremely high, so it did not compute um, a very good approximation for Leduc Hold'em. Now, one thing that has been proven, although there's, there's really no significant guarantee, one thing that has been proven is that CFR is guaranteed to not put any weight on iteratively strictly dominated strategies or actions. Now for certain very small games, for example, two player coon poker, um, a very high fraction of actions are dominated and this is useful. Um, however, um, for, for even slightly larger games and for essentially all realistic games, um, only a very small fraction of actions are dominated um, and the guarantee is not useful. Um, for example, I had this paper where I looked at um, if you scale up 
um, the Poon Pope would have an end card deck. Um, essentially, only a very small number of, of actions and strategies is dominated um, in comparison to the overall number. It actually doesn't increase at all. Um, and so this is not a very useful guarantee. Um, despite it being the only one, it's not very useful um, for realistic games. Now, um, despite a lack of these guarantees, CFR has achieved strong performance even in multiplayer games. In, in three-player limit, Texas Hold'em agents um, won the annual computer poker competition using CFR. And recently, um, there was an agent called Pluribus that um, when combined with um, sub-game solving and depth limited search, it produced a superhuman agent um, for six-player No Limit Texas Hold'em that defeated some of the strongest human players in the world. Now, another um, iterative algorithm that has been developed called fictitious play has been demonstrated to converge to Nash equilibrium. Actually, not just demonstrated, it's been proven to converge to Nash equilibrium in two-player zero-sum games and certain other game classes, but other two-player game classes, but not for um, in general for multiplayer games or in general for non-zero-sum games. It has been proven, proven that if it does converge, then the average of the strategies played throughout the iterations is a Nash equilibrium. However, it is not proven that the average strategies that the algorithm does converge. Now, um, it has, despite the fact that there's no theoretical guarantee of convergence, it has successfully been shown to approximate equilibrium strategies in several multiplayer domains. Um, back in, in 08 and 09, um, I showed um, in a three-player poker tournament that fictitious play did consistently converge to equilibrium. Um, in multiplayer auctions, it's been shown. And um, recently, we have work on a national security on a um, strategic planning, um, naval planning problem, where which had four players, where it did consistently converge um, to Nash equilibrium. Now, um, for large games, both CFR and fictitious play, they can be integrated with forms of sampling, um, which allows them to be scalable to large imperfect information games, such as poker. Um, recently, they've also both been integrated with deep reinforcement learning um, to obtain strong performance in several simplified forms of two-player poker. And for these experiments, um, this deep CFR was shown to outperform um, this version called neural fictitious self-play. Um, and so it was concluded from these results that fictitious play has a weaker theor theoretical convergence guarantee than CFR and in practice converges slower. Now, um, the fictitious play algorithm works as following. So essentially, each player plays a best response at each iteration to the average of the strategies played by the opponent so far. At time equals one, the strategies can be initialized arbitrarily, typically uniformly random. In our experiments, we're going to be uniformly random. And at each time step t, each player i is going to use the following rule to obtain the new average strategy they're going to put um, weight one over t on sigma prime, which is now, which is the best response to the profile of the other players at time t minus one. And it's gonna put weight one minus one over t over the strategy for player i at, at time step t minus one. So all the players are gonna do this um, for all steps from one up to big t. And so the final strategy at sigma capital T here is going to be um, the average of the strategies played at all the individual iterations. Now, CFR algorithm is also a self-play algorithm work that's following. So for each player I, for each peer strategy SI, um, we define the regret for not playing SI as opposed to following um, this joint profile sigma T as follows. Basically, the difference in performance had we played SI, um, so the utility of playing SI against sigma T minus the utility of playing sigma T against the opponents playing sigma T. Um, and so the regret um, for SI at iteration T is defined as, um, de at iteration capital T is essentially defined as the sum over all of the little t, sum of or over all the iterations of the regret of SI at that iteration. Now define RT with a plus to be the max of RT and zero. We're going to again initialize um, the strategies to be uniform random at, at the initial strategy, sigma one. 
And at each um, time step, we're going to select the strategies according to this regret matching rule, where we essentially select the strategy in proportion um, to the amount of, of positive regret um, on that strategy. With the, now, if the denominator equals zero, then we're going to just assign each strategy with equal weight. And so the final strategy output, like for fictitious play, is going to be the average of the strategies played over all of the iterations. So we ran several sets of experiments. The first set of experiments was on uniform random games um, where we, we randomly generate all the payoffs to be within zero one. Um, we varied the number of players and number of pure strategies. We used um, two, three, four, and five players, and we used three, five, and 10 pure strategies. We randomly generated 10,000 games for each of these parameter settings. Um, we, for each of the algorithms, we ran each of them for 10,000 iterations. Um, except for the largest game, in order to, speak, to um, take less time, we ran it for a thousand durations. Um, for n equals two, we also experimented with um, zero sum games. And um, so, after the ten thousand games, if we did not obtain statistical significance at ninety five percent level, we ran a hundred thousand games. And then, if we still didn't have statistical significance, then we just declared a statistical tie at that point. And so, um, this table here summarizes. The results, so n again is the number of players, m is the number of pure strategies per, per player, um, we have the number of games, number of iterations of the algorithms. Now the epsilon is essentially the degree of Nash equilibrium approximation. It's the most that any player could gain by deviating. And so lower, you know, zero would be the best, would be exact equilibrium. Um, and so here um, in this um, second to last column, we have the difference in epsilon. We have the epsilon, um, for fictitious play minus um, the epsilon for CFR. So positive value, sorry, it's the other way around. So positive value indicates that fictitious play outperforms CFR. So it's a different CFR epsilon minus the fictitious play epsilon. Um, and so in the final column, we have the winner. Um, and here, the, the second to last column also reports the 95% confidence interval. Um, we see here that for the two player zero sum game, CFR did better in two out of three. Um, for all the others, either fictitious play pretty much did better in all of them, except two of them was a statistical tie. Now, for the next set of experiments, um, we um, considered games generated by this gamut generator, or gamut, um, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, um, which generates a wide range of realistic game classes. And we used all the same games and parameter settings that were used in prior experiments that compared the algorithms for multiplayer Nash equilibrium. We, for pretty much all the cases, we used five players and three actions. For two of the game classes, um, you're forced to use the same number of actions as players, so we had to use five actions. For each class, we generated a thousand games. Occasionally, um, the generator outputs some degenerate games that had undefined payoffs, and so we excluded those. We also normalized all the payoffs to be in in zero one to make the comparison sensible, and we use ten thousand um, iterations for each for CFR and for fictitious play, and so this gives the results. Um, again, M is the number of strategies per player, and um, we can see here that for all the cases, either fictitious play won, or for a couple of them, it was a, it was a um, statistical tie. Again, the ninety five percent confidence intervals are reported, and. Um, notably here, we can see for, for most of these cases, except for a couple, um, these epsilon actually were extremely slow, I mean, extremely small. We can see a lot of 10 to the minus 5, 10 to the minus 4, um, even though, you know, in general, these algorithms don't have any guarantee on these classes. So um, in conclusion, um, we saw for the random game, CFR outperformed fictitious play on the two-player zero-sum games, while... Um, for all the other cases, fictitious play outperformed CFR. There was one or two where they tied, but essentially um, fictitious play did better other than the two-player zero-sum games. For all of the Gamut games, fictitious play outperformed CFR with statistical significance, or in a few of them they tied. It seems in general that fictitious play seems to clearly outperform CFR in terms of Nash equilibrium approximation for multiplayer games and non two-player non-zero-sum games, while CFR appears to outperform fictitious play for two-player zero-sum games. Thank you.